What I didn't talk about before is easterly programming a little bit about how what we need to do to uh, do leaf counting. And what this uh, slide set is going to cover is handling uh, an Easter lily from start to finish as it comes in. Now, uh, Easter lilies are, are crated in um, typically in a wooden box packed in sphagnum moss or peat moss. And uh, this is a, a box of uh, Easter lily bulbs. I don't remember the, the, the grade. They're probably grade seven. And when you get your Easter lilies in, and these have not had any cold treatment at all, um, you can get Easter lilies that come in like this that have been uh, crate cooled, but uh, these have not. The first thing you do when you get your uh, Easter lilies in is open the box and make sure they're in good shape. Uh, and you want to make sure that you prepare, you get all, everything ready to go with your good mix and um, put together. When you start taking your easterly bulbs out, you want to trim off the broken roots, anything that's broken or damaged, and then you want to grade them according to size. You want to grade them according to size and how much of the stem is already elongating, okay? And you can see that the stem is white because it's not had any sunlight. It's etiolated at this point. So we're going to grade our bulbs to the size and we're going to group them in different groups because the smaller ones will be a little slower and the bigger ones will be a little faster and so forth. The next thing is to fill our pots and here I'm putting about an inch of potting soil in the bottom of the pot because I want to put that easterly bulb all the way into the bottom. Before I plant that bulb, however, I'm going to do a fungicide dip and I want to dip that that bulb into a fungicide so that we have a good treatment, but I really should be wearing gloves. So, so here, these have been packed into the uh, into their into their containers, and we force them. Uh, we've started to get them growing. We have nice green stems starting to come up. Um, make sure the green the little want to make sure that they're pointing up because um, if it's not if it's slow that means you may have turned it upside down and believe it happens to everybody At this point I'm going to pack them into the cooler to go through their temperature forcing their chilling period and then I'm going to bring them out of the cooler and hopefully they're all uniform and up and happy and ready to go and like I said the we're we're now on target for Easter and hopefully we're going to make them grow. And they're starting to grow, hopefully. Nice uniform development. But at some point, we need to start thinking about programming that crop for Easter. Because at this point, I'm looking at the calendar and I see that Lent is not far away. And at this point, I am starting to panic. So it's time for measuring some adjustments, looking at, here we can see some plants that are short, here we can see some plants that are tall, cooling pad here, I might start moving the plants back and forth across the greenhouse, trying to even out the temperature, and so forth. But to really know what I'm doing, I need to count my leaves. So what you do is you take uh, some representative material and you bring it into a counter and you, st and you start looking at, you need to evaluate how many leaves are yet, le yet to unfold. I can see how many leaves have unfolded at this point, but I need to do an evaluation. So the first thing I do is I strip that foliage and I count the number of leaves that has unfolded. Here's the stem, the top of the soil, and I have 70 leaves unfolded. I probably should have done this a little earlier. Okay. 70. That's how many leaves have unfolded. This is a determinate blooming plant. Count the leaves left unfold and I've got 19. Those are the ones that are compressed in there and the only way you can do this is to take and open up the whole stem. Okay. Now one little check. Did I get them all? Probably not. You might need a hand lens to get the rest of them. And of course, I did 
note that there was a, a couple more, and there was actually 21. So I missed a couple. So I have 21 leaves yet to unfold. Now at this point, I can start predicting I need how many leaves have yet to unfold between now and my harvest date, or to visible bud, and I can start programming my crop by m modifying my average daily temperature. If I need to get more leaves to unfold per day, I bump the temperature up. If I need to slow them down, I bring it down, okay? Now, we've got flower buds, okay? Here we can see the flower buds are formed, and we have a, a, a reproductive meristem, and we no longer have vegetative meristem. So we've ensured that the flower buds are there, and we're ready to think about it. This is also a good time to look at my roots. These, the roots ab above the the top of the bu bulb, are, these are the ones that are giving us most of my nutritional feed. The ones below are mostly holding the, bu the flower, the, the bulb into the container. All right. So program the harvest date. We're looking at how many leaves that we're going to unfold per day, and we're constantly looking at where we're going. And we have happy lilies. And we're looking for flower buds. At this point, you're starting to really panic because you don't see any flower buds. But if you look really close, you can see them. And I call it, you know, patience with Easter lilies is nothing but stress. And all I did was push the exposure on this so you could see the flower bud right there. But there's a lot of easier picture to see. You can see the flower buds. There they are. Now we know we're on track. Are we? Are we there yet? We're still looking at where we've got to go. What happened here? What happened here? Well, what I didn't tell you is that really was a fungus, that was a, a, not a fungicide dip, that was a plant growth regulator dip. Some growers will do a plant growth regulator dip. However, one of the risky things about doing a bulb dip with plant growth regulators is you're assuming you're going to have perfect production throughout your year. And it's easier to do graphical tracking with your Easter lilies and use diff and application of PGRs later in the crop than do that bulb dip so that you don't have that kind of response. All right, so we had visible bud. Now we have flower bud expansion and development. And we're starting to look at how fast they're going. We may move, move the ones back and from cool sides of the greenhouse to warm sides of the greenhouse. And we're going to start counting our buds making sure, because if we have a contract with a, with a, a large um, corporate client, like if we're growing for um, uh, a box store or something, they're going to require a certain number of buds. And we're going to start counting our buds, and we're going to start grouping our plants for our market. So if we have a good church market, we're going to go seven, depending on uh, seven to nine buds. If we have a smaller retail where they're not giving us much money, we might be pushing those back. But if, we have a, if we're guaranteeing a certain number of blooms per plant, we need to know how many flower buds in that cluster. And the nearing harvest. Again, here you can see this is the PGR bulb dip. That's one. This is actually probably a little too tall. Now another thing you can see here on this particular one is uh, with that high stretch, we're starting to see these lower leaves are starting to deteriorate. And if we put that in the cooler, those lower leaves are actually going to fall off unless we spray a product on there called fascination. So ideally, we like to have a nice full base to the bottom. And now our buds are hitting what we call the puffy white stage for our final finish. And hopefully, Palm Sunday is in a day or two, and we can ship that crop. I have to uh, say one thing. This, this set of slides was prepared for me by John Ray, and I have to credit it. So we lost John. <laughs>